thank you everybody. Uh, nice to be here. Um, I was going to do this as an interpretive dance with hand puppets, but I think we'll just stick with the slides. All right, so to give you a little bit of a background on myself, um, I grew up in a small town in eastern Iowa, and that's the uh, main street of the town that I grew up in, and kind of still basically looks that way today, except it is a paved road now. Um, I do have a Master's of Arts degree in Museum Studies, which I got in 1995 from uh, John F. Kennedy University out near San Francisco. Um, I've been in the museum business basically since 1996. Um, I've worked at the Marshfield Air Museum, uh, the San Bernardino County Museum, the Fort Lauderdale Historical Society, uh, the Old Davy School, and currently I work at the Jewish Museum uh, on Miami Beach and split my time between uh, the Jewish Museum and the Wolfsonian since July. Um, I'm also the author of three books, uh, one on postcards, one on legendary locals of Fort Lauderdale, and one on the lost restaurants of Fort Lauderdale. So basically, uh, I guess it's been what, a year and a half or two years ago, the Historical Society decided to, uh, that they were going to catalog their collection, because uh, basically, uh, from going through the records, uh, since it was founded in 1980, there's been some little sporadic inventories, but no real list of what was in the collection and no real uh, cataloging of it. Uh, so the board decided to purchase a program called Path Perfect, which is a collections database. Um, after working with it for a little bit, uh, Jim and some of the board members decided that uh, instead of volunteers doing it and them trying to do it, that uh, they should hire a uh, museum person who's been trained on doing this kind of stuff. Uh, so they put out the, uh, job listing and I applied and uh, luckily they hired me and since January uh, I've been doing this project. Um, so basically uh, I'm just going to go through a couple slides here which basically just shows you kind of the layout of the program. It's a web-based program. Um, there used to be a program that used to be on your actual desktop computer but now it's kind of in the cloud. Um, so this is just kind of the, the first First page that you get to, and you can see there's all different kind of categories where information can go. Uh, slide. Um, the ones that we use mostly is there's one that's called a contacts page. This is basically where you input the information about your donors. Uh, you know, the ones that we can figure out who donated what. Um, and you can see some of the names there. Probably some of the names are probably familiar to some of you. Next. Um, and then this is just when you open that contact record, you can see the different fields that you can put uh, information into. Um, you know, first and last names, if you got a picture of the donor. Um, and then it also keeps track of you know, when you actually accession the, you know, their artifacts and give them their numbers, it keeps track of that. Um, there's also a space uh, for biographical information. So some of the donors that can go in there or later on will go in there and Kind of fill those in, you know, to get extra information. Uh, so the main category that we use is what they call the accession number, um, and basically the accession number is assigned to a group of objects that come in from one donor, and it, the number is basically a two-part number uh, based on the year that the object came in or the, the group came in, and then within the within that year. The uh, number of the group that it was. So, like you say, if you see 1974 1, that was the first group of artifacts that came in in 1974. So, 1974 2 would be the second group. And then again, you got pop downs, pop up windows where you can again put in the information. Um, it automatically you know, fills in the donor based on you, know, you selecting you know, the contact person. Um, and it gives you all the other information as to like, you know, how it was received, when, when it was received, who accessioned it, and you know, a brief description of what that group of objects might have been. Uh, then the next category is, is the catalog. Um, every object gets its own individual catalog number. And it's basically, again, it's based off the accession number. And then, you know, so that group of objects, 
then you know just the number of objects in that group. So again, like 1974-1-1 is the first object out of that first group from 1974. And then again, you open up a drop down window and again, you can act, you know, put in the information. Um, as you can see, through these three different things, there's lots of information that can be put in there. Um, you know, it's like cataloging date, who cataloged it. Again, you can add a photograph to help you identify it. Next. And then it just kind of pages down. There's a section for condition. There's a section for, you know, where the location is. There's the notes field and then there's the people category where you can you know, select uh, search terms uh, to help uh, look for objects. And then right here, you know, the, lot, the location one drops down again, you can put in, you know, who inventoried it, the date it was, you know, what building it's in, what room it's in, you know, and sometimes even what shelf. And so most of you are probably in the Kester cottages. So you can see from these next set of four slides, um, we have lots of objects that need uh, cataloging. That's cottage two. And I can say every individual object gets a number, gets a you know, gets a entry into the database, and gets a photograph taken of it. Not work. So every saw gets a number. Technically, every saw would get a number. Um, that's why there's some objects in there where we're debating whether we actually need as many of each thing as we do. Um, again, you know, once you have one saw or two saws that. Yeah, you know, they may have some you know donor or family connection to Pompano. Um, some stuff doesn't. You know, again, we got multiple toolboxes and multiple tools. Again, how many drill bits do you really need? And then this is uh, just kind of another you know the storage closet in, in uh, cottage number two. Uh, so you can kind of see you know whereas in the display rooms things are kind of you know, displayed nicely here, things just got shoved into the closet. And again, you know, we had to go through and you know, photograph and catalog and inventory of our object that was in there. And as we did the inventory, uh, we have certain things like this uh, chest of drawers and there's other uh, cabinets that have drawers in them. Um, in, the, in the main cottage, there's a dresser in the bedroom, in both bedrooms. Again, you open the drawer, every single drawer is full of stuff. <laughs> All right, so basically what we did, what I did from the beginning was I kind of went back um, through the uh, scrapbooks that they used to do with the annual scrapbooks, because um, there were some photographs that showed things in there. So, so I'm trying to find specific dates as, you know, as, as close as I can. Um, we. So I created a set of in, uh, inventory sheets from these scrapbooks, uh, past dosing scripts. There was a script that, you know, they used to say, you know, this object was from this person and this object was from that person. Um, so then I created basically an Excel spreadsheet that, you know, for each room, what was supposed to be in there based on what I could find on information. And then we would go through and check it off as we found it. And if we, you know, Found the stuff that was in there, then we went to a you know, handwritten list of you know, writing down things. Um, the Excel spreadsheet worked really well in Cottage 1 because that had kind of like inventories that had basically been done by each room. Uh, when we got to the second cottage, it was basically a mishmash and I had like 90 pages. Uh, so we basically, at that point, abandoned the list the printed list and went to just a written list because having Barry, my assistant, trying to flip through 90 pages, trying to find an object that might be listed, it was just easier to go you know, handwritten list. And that's Barry Moss, former city commissioner, who's been a uh, godsend on this project. Um, he was with me from the beginning, and since January through July, I was here basically two days a week doing this, and he was here helping me. Um, if he was, hadn't come and helped us, uh, I'd probably still be in the kitchen of the first cottage. <laughs> and he's also, uh, I've kind of been showing him how to do the data entry so we kind of get someone else trained 
you know, you know, kind of learn how to use the system. And this is just kind of shows some of the things that we've found in there. As you can see, everything, like I say, got it, gets its own catalog number and it gets a photograph. And then we've, we've got a master database and then we also have a master image file for all these images. That's just some more stuff out of the cottage number two. All right, so then as we got through this, uh, I decided to pull off some items of interest that I found that were interesting, um, you know, and had a little story that went with them and had a little research works to trying to find information on. So in the implements room, we have this gas can that's sitting there and it does have this little label on it. It says the gas can was left near uh, the gas station for use or after hours. So hopefully we can find some additional information, you know, on this as to which gas station that was, you know, located near, you know, because it doesn't give you, you know, a nice little tidbit of history of Pompano. Um, also in the implement rooms, uh, we have uh, a multitude of uh, hand planes. Um, on the left hand side, you can see, you know, the various stages of the metal ones. Uh, we also have this box or crate that has all these kind of primitive ones that have. You know, you put the blade in and you have a little wood shiv that holds it in place. So we do have quite a collection of uh, planes that, you know. We can use. Uh, one of the interesting items that I found, which I had seen in pictures from 1988. And when we first were doing the inventory, it's like, okay, where is this object? Where is this object? Ends up, it was one of the objects that was in the closet. Um, it's an it's a ink stand, um, and it was uh, donated by Mrs. Parks, who's uh, Admiral Parks' uh, wife. Um, Admiral Parks was the first captain of the USS Pompano in World War II. Um, in 1957, he was on a tour of uh, South America and, and in Chile, and the mayor uh, presented him with this inkwell. Amazing. Was Pompano a warship? Hmm? Was that a warship? Pompano was a uh, submarine. I didn't ever heard of it. I never heard of it. And actually, it was sunk before the end of the war. So. We, we, it went missing in 1943 uh, in, uh, in the Pacific yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. So, yeah, we also got from Admiral Parks as a state, we also got uh, quite a few, you know, USS Pompano pieces of memorabilia. We got the original ensign flag that was uh, on there. We've got the, the christening bottle when it was was launched in 39. Uh, did it sail out of Florida or did it? No, it was, uh, it was launched from Mare Island out near San Francisco and was in the Pacific. And it arrived in uh, at Pearl Harbor in the Hawaiian Islands just after December 7th. So it spared destruction. I think it, uh, it ran at least seven, eight significant missions before it was lost in 1943. And another one of the uh, uh, items that we had was again, I'd seen photographs of, couldn't seem to find it until we started into that closet. Um, this is a, a stamp dispenser. Um, you can see with the two and the three cent stamps. Um, one of the and what's really interesting is we have the original shipping box that it came in from the Shermac Corporation. And then another little interesting thing that I find on the on this box, you kind of see this little notch cut into it. So I, I my theory is it was probably used as some sort of ballot box at, at some later date. You know, whether the postal workers were having a vote or something with the union or something like that. And I can say it's, it's neat that we not only have the actual object, which is you know, bordering on you know, 90 years old, we have the original box that came <laughs> nope, No more stamp, no stamps in there currently. Uh, one I think it was both. I think there was, you know, it was, it was then probably local stores, but it was also, you know, when you went, went to the post office. 
Uh, these are some of the uh, pieces that we have from our the pharmacy collection. Um, these are glass bottles about that tall, and they're all stoppered. Um, and it's there's three different types of uh, you know, medicine that McClellan would have had at his pharmacy. But the fact that they're still full and stoppered and you know, still in great condition. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. And then another neat little item that I found that I had never, we didn't have any photographs of it, so we're not really sure when it came in. Uh, but it was this, this this little, you know, it's probably about this big. It was just a little chest of drawers. And then when you well, pulled open the drawers, they were all the labels that would have gone on gone to your pharmacy bottles and, and medicine bottles. And, you know, and again, the, you know, the condition of most of the, of the labels are, you know, almost pristine condition. So hopefully we'll get this back out on display in the pharmacy section. Uh, then again, these are some of the other different little items that we got. As you see through the photographs, we have quite a diverse collection of, of artifacts. Um, up in the left hand corner is a, a little brass match holder that would hold the package of, packages of matches. Um, there's a rubber stamp there for yellow squash. And then we've got these two uh, African American dolls that came in from. Elena and Norma Olivy. Um, cards that we have supposedly date them to, you know, like circa 1850. Um, I think they're probably a little newer than that, probably 1870s, 1880s. But again, they're two, you know, matching set of dolls. And again, they're probably about this tall, like six feet tall or whatever. I I don't, and in doing some of the research when I'm trying to, to Figure out what certain things are, and I, I go to you know the internet and I click on eBay because someone's selling it. You know, there's things you know some of these things you know based on eBay and some of the other pin interest places, you know Etsy things like that. To me, sometimes seem to have really high values on them. Like like this you know this little Poisonet match holder. I I when I looked it up, it's like anywhere from like twenty five dollars to two hundred dollars depending on quality and you know who the manufacturer was and we also have uh clothing in our collection um, on the left is a uh uniform for uh, a wave uh, which was uh, from rachel stratton barber uh, she was originally from vermont but she did come to pompano and lived here and was a school teacher in the school district um and then i these are two I mean, we've got some clothes that are just kind of regular clothes, and then I kind of chose these two because they're kind of you know really fancy. You know, this this one you know really has nice embroidery work, and this is the back of, of the jacket, and then this is a you know, little purple kind of lace shawl. And then just some other items. Again, like I say, we've got a diverse collection. Uh, we've got a whole set of uh, flat books, you know, from the 50s and 60s that, you know, basically lay out the county. And then as you flip through the pages, it shows you what was there at the time. Um, some of them are, photo, you know, era photograph books. So again, you can, you know, like in the 1950s, you can look out on like Hammondville Road and there's nothing except farmland. Um, and this one, you know, in the center there is, is a butter press. And then, uh, we got a you know, little token there, 25 cent tokens from uh, Griffith's Grocery here in Pompano. And then, like I say, we, we opened some of these drawers. Uh, these come from the drawer in the uh, front bedroom dresser. Um, and it's just some you know, little hand towels, a uh, little table runner, and then there was like three or four kind of needlepoint, you know, Swatches in there. So again, you know, some neat stuff because you know, like you know, some of the stuff you don't kind of really see the quality of it today. And then this is our collection of graders that we have in the kitchen. And as you can see, we have a large collection of graders, and they're all out on display. 
So and this is one of the things that we're kind of debating is, you know, again, you know, how many, how many is too many? You know, and how can you better, you know, how can you better tell the story? You know, can you tell the story better with three of them as opposed to four of them? You know, like I say, there's probably, you know, the, the four in the center are all basically, you know, the same flat type type of ones. So I think that's something we're gonna have to, you know, debate. But you know, again, you know, at the moment everything's getting a number. And I included this one because it's a uh Stat or a trophy from 1946 uh, that the city chamber of commerce gave gave to the Pompano High School because uh, they were had participated in the state basketball tournament and actually it was the third year in a row and I found found it interesting because the picture on the left is from 1988 and this is the picture from today and as you can see sometimes things get you know changed. Uh, you know, get changed around. You know, mm -hmm. somebody decided somewhere online, someone said, "Oh, it's a you know, it's a basketball trophy. It should have a basketball guy on it, as opposed to the eagle." Yeah. And that, like I said, that's one of the things of doing this inventory. You know, like I say, I've got inventory sheets and I got photographs, and it's you know, it's it's kind of interesting that you know, certain things in in the cottages kind of travel around to various rooms at various points in time. So, Todd, when you catalog this item as an example, would you include the reference to the earlier image as well? Yeah, what I did on this one is, I, yeah, obviously I gave this a number. If yeah, the trophy, you know, got its own number, uh, I included both pictures in in the database, and then uh, yeah, I do have a notation in the notes field saying, you know, per the 1988 photograph, you know, it originally had an eagle statue on the top. And then again, you know, we got some, you know, items as we were doing it, you know, Barry and I are looking at this little shoe and we're trying to figure out what this shoe is and what it, what it does. And, you know, we couldn't seem to find anything, you know, I think on the bottom of the, of the heel, there's a, a stamp from like Germany. So I'm looking up the city in Germany that's, you know, kind of stamped in there and I'm not really getting anything. And then I come in here and talk to, to Pat and she's like, Oh, I think that's a pin cushion. And then when I then when I input boot pin cushion, all of a sudden I got pictures of things like this. So. Yeah. <clears throat> and then this piece down here is a uh, another piece that we found in the drawer it was in the drawer of the uh, the Rains sewing machine. Um, it's from the Pinther family. Uh, it's actually. Uh, the man's name on there is, is Mrs. Pinther's father, and it's a, a souvenir from the 1892 Chicago World's Fair. Then we have this really weird object that you know sits in cottage number two, and you know for the longest time I think most people probably didn't really know what it was. And then, you know, as we're inventorying it, I'm opening it up because I want to take a photograph of the inside of it and everything. So then I, you know, read read about it. And then, you know, we find this piece of paper on the inside. What it is, is this Porter Clinic is basically the driver's test, you know, for driver's ed or, or at the DMV. You know, if you pull out everything, you've got, you know, the brake pedal, so it's testing, you know, how quickly you put on, on the brakes. It tests your, you know, field of vision, your, Depth perception, your action times. Um, I think that's like 50s. I think it's pretty important. Like I say, yeah, it's got, you know, like I say, it's got the brake pad, it's got the eye charts and everything in there. And I think we got it from the parks department or somebody like that. But again, you know, it, it kind of goes back to you know, because the thing is, you know, does it really help us tell the Pompano story or is it just a neat artifact? And some of these things that he had more history about how it was acquired and right. where it was originally used. Right. Like I say, if we, if we knew that it was used at Pompano High School from a certain you know, time frame or whatever, and you know, we knew it was Mr. Smith was the driver's ed teacher or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. 
But again, that's the additional information that we got to go. And I'm going to kind of finish up here with kind of mystery items. Uh, some of the things I in this section that I figured out what they are. Some of them I have no idea what they are, and not even sure what search terms to go looking for these things. Uh, these are in the implement rooms. Um, again, this you know we got this little packet of these three little pieces. We think that might be some sort of gate because it does kind of rotate, but you know, gate latch, and then not really sure what this does. That you know, it's kind of you know, it's 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 at an angle, so I think something goes down it, but it, it shifts it or something like that. All I know is when I sent it to my farm relatives back in Iowa, they all said I have no idea. <laughs> so, but if you know, like I say, this is a you know, it's a neat little thing because it you know. It unscrews and it folds up into you know just a little you know, square box. Yeah, it could be. The only thing is, is you know, like where the pieces would fall out is you know is is beyond you know this tray. So yeah, it's a little hard to tell in that picture. But yeah, the bricks, bricks, laying down some bricks, and you don't want to quit. <laughs> All right, then again, you know, here's some additional items. The, the little iron, you know, initially I'm looking at it, it's like, okay, it's, you know, kind of, you know, some sort of fancy hand iron. My problem is it's only about this big. And then as I open it up, turns out it's a pencil sharpener. Um, this piece is in the uh, kitchen. Again, I'm looking at it, trying to figure out what it is. Because it does, you know, kind of open up, you know, into, you know, the two, two squares. Again, I, you know, it, it has the manufacturer's name on it. So I was able to look it up on the internet. It's a, it's a camp skillet. It just, you know, folds out in this two, it's two rectangular, you know, kind of frying pans. And then again, an object that for the life of us, I can't figure out what it is. It's a thing that tie off bolts. Like a clip plate. Could be. Problem is, is it, it, it does, it, you know, you know, it has space underneath, you know, the base there. So maybe it, maybe it does, but it, you know, right now it's sitting in the pharmacy room. So, and it's been in the pharmacy room since at least 1988, because I can verify that by pictures. But again, you know, there's no, documentation to tell me what it is. And again, you know, search terms on the internet, you know, if you don't know what to search for, you're not going to find it. And then the last piece is uh, uh, these things that were called on old inventory cards as handcuffs. And I kept looking at them like, how is this handcuffs? And then I, you know, then there was a notation that somebody said they were nippers. So then when I looked up nippers, I found in an old, you know, police catalog, you know, you know what they look like. I'm still quite not sure how exactly they work, but you know, like I say, at least able to find information, and, you know, identify it, and give it, you know, give it its proper name. Uh, I think that was twenty late twenties or thirties. I think is that with the catalog. So that's just the sprinkling of some of the you know stuff that we have in there. Um, just to let you know, uh, to date, uh, we've added 1,614 records into the database system. So that's 1,600 items that we have inventoried and cataloged and photographed. Um, and currently, Barry is uh, in here doing uh, cataloging the uh, library books. Um, and I've been working on kind of finishing up with the inventory lists and the photographs and inputting the rest of everything that we've kind of inventoried uh, in the two cottages. And I basically come down to the implement room is the last room that I'm kind of have to do yet. And part of that I'm waiting on, you know, whether some of those items in there we're going to keep or get rid of because I don't necessarily want to give a number and do a data entry for an object that we may get rid of so and then just to kind of uh, let you know where we're going from here um once we get everything into the system 
Then we have to go back and physically tag or all of the objects and put, you know, put their, you know, their catalog number or the sticker or a tag on each, on each item. So that, again, that's another process. Um, some of the things that I say we're looking at is whether there's objects in the collection that, you know, we really don't need, you know, because we've got duplicates of them or we don't know what it is. Um, and then part of also doing this inventory, you know, we now want to know what we have and where the gaps are in our collection so we can, you know, maybe specifically start looking for certain things to fill in some of the gaps. Um, the board is also working uh, on a collections plan, which will kind of help play out, you know, the direction of where we want to go with our collection. Um, I'm going to probably help them a little bit with uh, some of the paperwork that goes with that, like our deeds of gift. So if someone brings something in, we fill out our deed of gift, we get the information from them. So that we, you know, know who the donor is going forward. If I can say a lot of the stuff that we have, I just have no idea who the donors are or, or when they came into the collection. Um, so we do use a number, a catalog number or exception number 2000-4, which is kind of the catch-all for everything that we can't specifically give, you know, you know numbers to. And then uh, we're also probably looking at, you know, maybe doing some updating of the way we exhibit stuff and trying to tell the Pompano story a little bit better. And then finally, uh, once we get done with the cottages, we'll be coming in here to the hood center and we'll be going through the photograph collection and basically doing the same thing. Uh, scanning the photographs, putting them in the, in the system, identifying them, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So that's basically what we've been doing on the project. Thank you, Todd, for doing that. Thank you, Jim, for doing that. Sure. Yes. Thank you, everybody else, and have a good evening. Thank you.